Okay, so what we're doing here is making a what we call a clay donut. Uh, we've got plenty of clay donuts behind us, but we're just showing you how we make them. We're just using local clay, we've just sourced uh, from down the road, and we're mixing it with straw. Send. Ideally, the straw should be two or three, four inches okay. long. Uh, it gives a good strength to the clay. And uh, so the clay and the straw together is what we call straw clay. And then, once that's mixed in, we'll mix in puffed rice. And the puffed rice is what makes the clay insulating. And I'll explain why that's important in a minute. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we've got four ingredients in these bricks. We've got the clay, we've got the straw, we've got puffed rice, and now we're mixing in a little bit of sand. So each of these ingredients has a purpose. The clay is like yeah. glue, it binds everything together. The straw is, gives it the tensile strength so that it won't fall apart and break. The sand gives it compressive strength so it, uh, it can stand weight on it. And the rice is what makes it insulating because this puffed rice basically is just pockets of air. And that's the magic ingredient which will make our rocket stove work. And we're going to put this together into a tube and we'll show you how that works uh, very soon. Okay, so we're just making a mix now, which we've just been showing you with the straw, the rice, the sand and the clay. Roughly, uh, let's say two parts clay, one part sand, one part rice, one part straw. Uh, gives a very nice mix, but the mix, the ingredient uh, ratios are fairly flexible. Just make a mix that's fairly uh, pliable. Tenzin, just move yeah, this yeah. mix so we can see. Yeah, yeah. You see how yeah. easy this mix is to work with. Yeah and we're going to use our tube to make a donut. In the making of these donuts, because we're making so many, we've actually made up some special rings to make it really easy. But all you really need is a strip of steel, and we're using a strip that's five inches wide, and we're making donuts that have a hole five inches round, five inches high in the middle and the outside diameter is 11 inches and that gives a, a wall thickness of three inches and we find that that works for us. These donuts uh, take roughly five ten minutes to make once you've mixed yeah. everything up yeah. and then they really should sit for one or two days depending on your climate. We're up in the dark at the moment where it's incredibly dry so they dry very quickly and we can start working with them the next day and we've already got a bunch of donuts uh, which we've made and these have been made over the last two or three days and once they're solid enough to pick up without falling apart you can actually start building your stove. Okay so this is pretty much all we need to make a smokeless cook stove. Uh, one more donut's on the way. We've got our semi-wet donut which we're going to uh, cut. The other donuts we're just going to stack. We've got this cardboard tube, which we're just going to use to make a mould. And we've got a bit of old scrap cardboard we're just going to wrap around this tube to just give us a bit of extra width, because we want to keep the five inch diameter running right through the system. Uh, I've just got a basic old saw, which I'm going to cut this donut with. And I've got this pipe, which is going to bring airflow into the burn chamber, which helps it burn hot and clean. So now I'm just going to cut a slot in this donut. It's made yesterday so it's uh, still fairly soft uh, and easy to cut. Line up with this slot and you'll see that the slot has got a slight uh, angle to it so I want the flame to come in and it's going to spiral in the middle here so it's, it's flat on one side and direct towards the center on this side. Special uh, shape to the uh, flow into the first donut we create what's called the vortex or a spiral flame path, which helps create turbulence and it helps the gases to combust uh, more efficiently. So it's quite an important part of this process. The other thing that's really helpful to getting a hot clean burn, which is what we're after, is to introduce what we call secondary air. Now, the, I'll explain why it's called secondary in a minute, but the, the way that we get that is we, we just use a piece of old pipe and we lay it down next to this tube and we're going to feed it through into the base of this uh, first donut so that the pipe is going to feed air into the main burn tube. So I'm just going to do that first. 
I just want this tube to come in through the, the base here, so I'm just going to poke a little hole in the clay here, and it's just going to bring it into uh, the very bottom there. You might just look straight down. That looks good there. So that's going to introduce a fresh flow of oxygen into the point where the hottest flame will be, which will help our flame get hot, clean, and smokeless. In the same clay mix that we used to make the brick, it's just the same mix of clay, sand, straw, and puffed rice. Uh, and we're just going to slap it all around this section here to hold everything in place. And this is what's going to become our burn tunnel. This is our burn tube over here. And what we're going to uh, build in a minute is the, the stick feeder. So now I'm going to use one of our donuts as the stick feeder. And we've just made a bed of nice wet clay for it to go straight onto. So I'm just going to nestle it oops, onto there. That's nice. Now we're just going to stack up three more donuts uh, on our burn tube. So we'll end up with five donuts uh, for the main burn tube, and that'll be the, the, uh, the cooking situation. And this is where the fuel will be fed into the fire. As you can see, the donuts can be quite rough. They don't have to be uh, smooth and perfect to start with because with the clay, we can smooth off any surface and by the time we're finished with it, it'll be a really smooth, clean, uh, nice looking thing. Yeah, our ash clean out hole just here and we need to block that off when it's burning so I'm just going to make it nice and flush here and we'll just put a piece of tin or something against that just so to block the air from coming in there when we're firing up but we can easily open it up when we want to clean out the ash. I'm just putting three little blobs up the top here which is going to be our pot holder and that what that does is means the pot will sit above high enough above the edge of the of the burn tube which will allow the hot gases to escape from the side so it won't choke the uh, combustion and but it will put the pot in the hottest position of the fire. The great thing about these stoves is because of the rice in the mix the clay becomes insulative and an insulated fire burns so hot that the smoke itself will burn. That's got two amazing benefits. The first is of course that it's smokeless but the second is that the smoke itself is unburnt energy and when we burn that we get four times the heat for the same amount of fuel. So it's an incredible saving of fuel and of course amazing benefit of not having smoke. Okay so now uh, this tube just served as a mold to hold the shape and now we don't need it so I'm just gonna carefully give it a little tug. Uh, so what we've got left is just this old piece of cardboard which we're going to burn out when we fire it for the first time. Here's one that we've made a few days ago. Uh, it does take a few days to dry because obviously there's a lot of clay in this structure. So we've made this I think let's say four or five days ago. We've fired it uh, several times so it's probably had three or four hours of burning and now it burns really clean. So uh, just like that, Tenza just lit it. It literally took less than 30 seconds. You can't see anything there, but that's hot. And if you want to just come and have a look inside, you'll see just how hot that is. Okay, so as you can see, we're just using very small sticks and wood. Uh, it burns, it really likes small wood, it's scraps, animal dung, dried animal dung is perfect. This stove um, burns approximately one kilo of fuel per hour. And as you can see, no smoke coming out of that fire. We put a pot straight on top of there, we can boil water, we can cook dinner, and uh, we're ready to go. So one of the things that you will find uh, as the stove itself dries out, uh, first it will go from being a little bit smoky, then it will go to non-smoky, and then you'll see some black smoke coming out. And what that is, is the rice and the straw in the clay actually getting hot enough that they'll actually burn out. It'll only take a few hours for that to burn out completely enough to burn clean, and that's what we want because once the rice bubble burns out, all that's left are little pockets of air, which makes it insulating, and an insulated tube is what makes a rocket stove. 
So the vortex, as you can see here, the flame path is mostly spiralling and we've deliberately done that because that creates turbulence and we've also got our secondary air feeder tube which is feeding clean oxygen into that hot uh, burn chamber. So both of those factors help the fire uh, burn hot and clean. The only bit left now is what we call the ash uh, clean out tube and all we've got is a piece of old tin and a stone just leaning up against this tube just to st stop the air coming in because if we open it you can see a bit of back smoke. We close it then it sucks through here, comes out here, works perfectly. So that's really just for cleaning out the ash after you've had a good burn. Okay, so the reason that I find this exciting is because for about a dollar's worth of material, the dollar going towards the puffed rice, we can make a cook stove that burns smokeless and smoky fires are killing four million people a year. So for a dollar, we can make something that's ultra cheap, ultra simple and smokeless.